so I decided to add my own touch to the flash. To get started, I found this decent flash model from Sketchfab and imported it into Blender. I set its rig to Rex position and scale it down to fit a human size. Since I was going to use Mixamo to rig the character, I deleted the existing rig and the character mesh vertex groups. Although when I uploaded it to Mixamo, it seemed like the character wasn't completely symmetrical. It wasn't a big issue so I ignored it and moved on with the rigging process. It turned out pretty okay, so I downloaded the rig character and these two animations. A running animation and this run to stop animation. I downloaded them without the skip. Then I imported the rig character to Blender and used the free Mixamo add-on to create a control rig for it. Before moving on to the animation, I started working on the materials. First, I had to spend a few minutes organizing the materials, renaming them just to keep things organized. For the suit material, I wanted to create this pattern on the suit. Initially, I thought to go with a PCB pattern, but then I found this one, which wasn't perfect but would do an okay job. Then I used that texture to create variation in color, light red and dark red. Also used it to add some bumps to the material. I set the clear coat value to 1 to get that shiny look you see in the film suit. Since I am not a big fan of uniform values, I used a noise texture to create a bit of variation to roughness as well. This flash model came with an emissive texture to add those glowing lines to the suit. I used that with a multiply node to increase its strength. For the emission color, I made it orange. Then used a similar setup for the helmet and boots material. For the gold color pieces, I again used a noise texture to modify the material. Using a color ramp, I increased its contrast and then used it to create slight variation in color, roughness and normal channels. After all this, I did some minor adjustment to the other materials and was ready to move on to the next stage. I imported that two animation I downloaded from Mixamo. Then while selecting the flash control rig in the Mixamo add-on, I chose running animation armature as the source skeleton and applied it to the control rig. This created a new action for the flash rig from that animation. I renamed it to something recognizable. Then I opened nonlinear editor and hit this push down button to make an action strip out of that action. After that, I could use this repeat slider to loop the running animation. Did the same process for stopping animation and got that action to nonlinear editor as well. Set its extrapolation value to hold forward and position the clip where I wanted the flash to stop running. I blended both clips to smooth the transition. Since I wanted the flash to slide a bit when he stopped, I selected that stopping action and repositioned its keyframes a bit. You can use the tab key to go to this tweak mode. I got the flash animations to work but he was still running in the same place. So I added an empty object and made our control rig its child with a child of constraint. Then I animated that empty's location to make our flash run and stop. I used the graph editor to further adjust the empty's timing. It was time to add the camera to the scene. Although this was inspired by this shot from the trailer, it took me some time to get a camera animation that I like. I tried two different cameras and many different angles but since I really didn't want to be too ambitious with the shot, I tried to keep things simple as I could. Then I came across this awesome street model in Sketchfab. 
and it helped a lot with the framing of the shot. After I got the camera animation I was happy with, it was time to deal with this environment. To be honest, this model was perfect. Only thing I replaced was the road. I downloaded a road texture from textures.com and use it here. But since I was going to have a close up of the road, I found this road texture a bit low res. So I used an asphalt texture and mix it with the original texture to further elevate the road look. Then I added some car models to the background and populated the scene with some Mixamo characters. Finally, it was time for the lighting effects. And I think this was the easiest part because a little while ago, I created a tutorial on creating procedural lightning effects in Blender. And based on that, I created a whole lightning effects pack that you can download for free now. So it was just drag and drop and tweaking some values. I used this single branch lightning effects from the free version to create almost all the lightning effects in the shot. Just put one end somewhere in the scene and stick the other end to flash body. Using a child of constraint, I attach it to the nearest bone of the control ring. This way, when the flash run, the lightning will stick to him. I started by adding some trailing lighting to the flash. Then added a few more branches that connects one end to a different place in the environment, such as road or a lamppost. I use the striking slider to create the lightning striking effect. Initially, I only cared about placing the lightnings. Since most of the lightnings come and go, I was able to use the same lightning two or three times in different places. In the latest release of the lightning pack, I added a new simple spark effect to the lightning pack which helps to add more realism to the lightning. I drag and drop them into the scene and place it where lightning hits and change their start frame depending on the striking time. After getting all the placing right, I spent some time adjusting the distortion settings to get the best look for the lightning effects. This leaves from the original model gave me a good idea to add a sense of speed to the scene. So I created a new plane, scaled it to fit the road size and used a shrink wrap modifier to put it above the road surface. Added a new particle system to the plane, created a vertex group and weight paint the areas where I wanted the leaves to be and used that vertex group as the density. Then added another new plane for the leaf object and used the leaf material from the original model. Use that as our particle mesh and tweak the particle settings to create a good simulation. Disable the emitter from render view and the viewport. To make the leaves move, I used wind force and force field effect. Since I rarely use most of these force fields, it took me a quite a few tries to get a simulation I like. I animated the force field locations and strength to make the leaves move due to flash speed. Then in our leaf material, I used the random socket from the particle info node to create a random hue for each leaf particle, which gave me a random colored leaves. After all that, I baked the particle scene. To improve the sliding effect, I decided to use dynamic paint to add something like drifting lines. I added some loop cuts to the road mesh 
to make square around the area where flash slides. Then create a new UV map and unwrap that square to fit most of the map. Put the rest of the mesh to a side on the map. Now I duplicated the road and isolate the square. I didn't need the rest of the mesh. Added dynamic paint to it. This would be the canvas. Did a similar thing to the flash mesh but that time I choose brush type. Increase the sub step and bake the image sequence. And it created this image sequence. This is the same technique I used for creating this fire simulation in my previous tutorial. Then in the road material I imported the sequence. Plug the curved UV map and change the start frame to match the sliding. And that gave me this good old pink color for initial frames. To fix that I used the hashtag frame command in a value node to get the current frame and check whether it is greater than 16 because frame 17 was the starting frame of the sequence. Then multiplied it with the image sequence. After that I was able to use this as a mask to create some differences in color, roughness and bump where the flash slides. I also used a noise texture and mixed it with the UV map with linear light blend mode to roughen the edges of our sliding mask. Also I turned down the roughness of the road to give it a wet look which helped to get nice reflections of the lightning effects. I found this sky from Pixabay and imported it to the scene using images as planes. Remove the principal shader and only use its texture for the material. I scaled it up and placed it way back in the scene. Since I didn't want it to cast any shadows, I turned off the shadows for it. Although this added a good looking sky to the camera, to actually light the scene, I used a separate sky texture as my world shader. After that, I added a sun lamp and angle it like this to create a golden hour look with long shadows. Give it a warm color and increase its strength a little bit. To improve the look of the lightning effects even more, I added point lights with small intensity to the ends of the lightning branches. Disable the shadows of lightning and spark effects as well. Then I animated the point slides intensity and their location to match the lightning striking. Actually it was at this moment I realized that the MECU lines on the flash suit were very different from the film suit. I could fix this. You can also destroy everything. Not really, I just have to replace the texture. Anyway, I started painting my own texture in the texture painting mode. And since this model had no symmetry, it made the whole process twice the fun. Also, since I started working on the material again, I created a pattern similar to the suit pattern in Photoshop and used a free plugin to convert it to a seamless texture. Then use it in the material instead of the previous texture. Well, it wasn't that bad. And after all this, I rendered the animation, did a bit of post-processing and here is the final result. Are you ready? Ready. So that's how I created the flash inspired animation using Blender. And huge thanks to this amazing individual for making these videos possible. Hit the like button, comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to HelloFX Learn so you won't miss out when the next video drops. Until next time.